You know what time it is, Lady Ada? What? It's New Product Time. Yay! All right. We don't have a new product. Working on it. Thing. Okay, let's do this thing. Okay, I have TNC3 to is out, a successful Kickstarter uh, for Paul. Yeah. And then we actually have these ready to go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I just want to talk very briefly about these. So the TNC3 is kind of, it's not even similar to the TNC2. It's kind of, it's the same shape-ish. But it uses um, it's a it's a um, Cortex M3 chip it uses the um, uh, Freescale Stellaris uh, MX processor. Um, it's crazy powerful, and he also uh, ended up porting the uh, Arduino IDE to support this uh, this processor, which is actually really cool. Um, I haven't had a chance to try it out, but uh, it seems very promising. I hope people check it out and. Yeah. Feedback. Yeah. And there's like, if you are curious about all the stuff, it does has a chart. I mean, it's just it's crazy. It does everything. Okay. Next up, coloring book is le released. Coloring you you book. can actually get it now. It is here. Yeah. Show on the overhead. Yeah. Show it over in the okay, overhead. Okay. So on the overhead. Let me thumb through the pages. I will. Really quick. I will thumb as soon as you flip over. Okay. So this is the um, lovely cover. Um, it's a nice stiff cover, and then there's multiple pages. Oh, this one's already colored in. Yeah, Becky colored that one. Nice work, Becky. And then. Um, yeah, all sorts of, up to Y, y for Yagi and Z for Zener. And so there's a little bit of text on each one and then um, a, a person who discovered something or uh, sometimes yeah. there's a cat or sometimes it's, you know, lost it with a multimeter. Printed in the USA. Yeah, in New Jersey. Special which is part of the United States. Yeah, special shout out. I think John Janier is here tonight. He did uh, some of the text on here. Yep. Um, this was uh, all drawn by Robert Ullman. Yep. Nice work. Robert yeah, Ullman. David who did the cover. Um, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. This was uh, it's a it's 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 the start of many types of uh, projects like this for us. Uh, next up, I'm probably gonna start doing R is for robotics. Yes. So I'll see you in two years. P is for programming. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, more all right, new so products. We're, we're yeah, we're whipping through these. Um, here is a quick video that Becky did. Okay. Um, she's going to show a few seconds of it. Lady Ada's E is for Electronics is a coloring book adventure with electronic components and their inventors. Inside, makers of all ages can learn, color, and share common parts and historical figures throughout history. The illustrations are accompanied by helpful text helping kids learn about everything from Ohm's Law to Quartz Crystals. L is for light emitting diode, and I had a great time bringing this drawing to life with lots of different colors. We get our coloring book printed in New Jersey at a solar powered facility using environmentally friendly printing supplies, and it features a full color illustration front and back cover and 26 coloring pages inside. You can print it at home by downloading our free PDF of the entire coloring book. So check it out. The coloring book is in the Young Engineer okay. section. And uh, as always, um, you know, we're, we're open source here, so we decided to put this as a Creative Commons share alike uh, unported license. That means you can download this. We actually have the direct download on our site. PDF. People have already started doing translations for Yay. it. Yay! So that's, that's kind of the thing that we're doing. Yeah, um, it's cool. I can't wait till we have like, you know, six different downloads. For yeah. Different All right, next up, um, we have... Uh, you have a little color controller for our LED strips. Yeah, I'm just going to go through these strips. really quick. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, do you want to go to the overhead, though? Yeah, we can go to the overhead. We also have a little video. Um, How about you do the overhead? We won't show the video because the, the, okay. it's, it's the same thing. Um, so, yeah, it's just, uh, the camera's all confused because it's too bright. But there's this um, capacitive touch square, and you can kind of see it's got uh, a color circle. And yeah. so I can uh, select what color by uh, spinning on the circle. It also has a couple different modes where it changes um, colors and it'll yeah. you know, fade through them. And then it's really easy to wire up to it. There's these terminal blocks over here. Here, I'll turn this off so you can focus on it. There's terminal blocks. It's connected up to uh, a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack, and then you connect the cables up to here, and it can do uh, up to 4 amps per channel. So there's a lot of LED strips. This is really a All lovely right. little thing and easy to mount onto your wall. Okay, we're going to keep moving. Uh, I really like this. This is the Color Forms uh, uh, paintbrush. If you like uh, the Draudio, uh, you'll like this. And uh, it's, we, it's based off of the Draudio. Yeah, and Jay Silver, who worked on the Draudio, uh, is credited on the design for this. We actually have an old photo of something that he worked on. This is like 3D printed version. So um, do check that out. Like I said, we're gonna we have to move really fast tonight. 
Um, some products in the Raspberry Pi world. Um, yeah. We've got the book. We got it a little earlier than we thought. So the Raspberry Pi book that uh, Evan. Evan and Gareth wrote, um, yeah. you can get right now. We actually have these. Yay. Um, it's actually really nice. It covers a lot of stuff from getting your Pi started to doing like LEDs and buttons. Yeah. Uh, and covers some accessories. It's it's a, it's a, you know, hot off the press. Yep. Next up, um, these are um, officially approved uh, aluminum milled cases. Can I show them the overhead? Because they're kind of cool looking. You, yeah. And uh, the, there is one with the Raspberry Pi logo and one yeah, without. One and these without. folks worked with the Raspberry Pi team, which we always think is important because if you're going to use the logo, you have to ask the foundation, and they did. So this is gorgeous. It's, it's, it's milled out of a solid block of aluminum. You can see the tool paths a little bit on the inside. Yeah. Um, it's polished on the outside. And, um, yeah, it's just this gorgeous chunk of aluminum, and it's bright and shiny. It has, like, mounting holes and stuff and, yeah. and all these holes. This one's the flat one. There's also a version with the logo on top. You know, Raspberry Pi is $35, so I figure you're ahead of the game. You know, spend spend some, some bucks some on, a, want a, on beautiful a beautiful case. case. Yeah, yeah, this case is the most beautiful case. And, and yeah, we were like, that is, it is the most, it comes with, you know, accessories and screws and the uh, insulating thing. And yeah, some, so we liked it, so we talked to them. Um, next up. Evil Mad Scientist has a new kit out. Yes. This is the art controller they, kit. This is a, um, it's a little bit hard to explain in detail, so I will yeah. tell if people want uh, more details, please check out yeah. the website. It's a relay board. I mean, It's that's... basically a relay timer control board, but basically solves a problem with people who are like, well, I just want a thing that like turns something on for a few minutes and then turns it off for half an hour. And so this, yeah. this is kind of an all-in-one timer board that yeah. they designed for a museum and uh, you okay. know, also good for this stuff. Next up. You want to start talking about these? Uh, yeah, these are LED matrices. We have more uh, 1.2 inch LED matrices, but I'm not going to show them individually. I'm instead going to show them. Um, and then we also have. Yeah, it's part of the backpacks. Part of the backpacks. You want to just so, go to the overhead? Yeah, go to the overhead and let me. You're going to go to the overhead. Plug this in. <clears throat> just give me one second. So yeah, um, the matrices are available individually, but um, most people don't want to do all the hassle of wiring them. So. We have a backpack, and the backpack has this lovely chip that we've been using for our LED backpacks, and we use them for the seven-segment backpacks and everything. And um, this is I squared C. You can connect up to eight uh, matrices all at once, which is which is kind of all you probably need. And um, oh, I'll turn this upside down. So yeah. This is the green one, and these are nice and bright. They, they're constant current, which is lovely. Um, they do all the addressing for you, so you just set you, know, you just say here's what I want to display, and we'll display it. Uh, so this is the green one. And then uh, reset. This one is the red one. Yeah. Looks kind of nice. And then this one is the blue one. And how are these controlled? What protocol would you possibly this use? This is I squared C. I squared C. So you can have up to eight of them because you can change the address on the back. You can have up to eight of them connected on the same I squared C bus. So you could Very nice. you know, have eight in a row and, and scroll messages across them and stuff if you want. Very cool. And then this one is probably the yellow one. Yeah. So this one is a yellow. It's actually amber. Yeah. So yeah, really bright, um, really nice matrices. Yeah. And uh, you can actually dim them through the. Um, we do live thing. demos every week. That's worth a streamy alone. Okay. It could, it could all go wrong. It's crazy. But it all goes right. Okay, next up. Next let's keep, up. Let's keep moving, moving, yeah, so moving, that's moving, the demo. moving, moving. Okay, next up. We got freaking lasers. We Look at these lasers. Them. These are photos of all the lasers. We got a laser mount. We got all these yeah. laser beams. Look at this. We, we got we got lasers. we got lasers that are pointers. We got lasers that are lines. Yeah. Let we got me, lasers that look on. like this. Okay, so let me first show off. We got a cross two. laser. Don't get too excited. We went laser crazy. Okay, let me show off the dot laser first. Okay. So let's I'm uh, on the actually, overhead. Uh, yeah, I'll show these on there. They actually all have the same body. They're um, they're round, and they're, they, you know this is the part that lasers. And there's a laser diode inside of here. It's uh, these are all 650 nanometer red laser yeah. diodes. They're all uh, five uh, nanowatts. Uh, uh, sorry, five milliwatts, which yeah. is uh, class 3A, which is kind of the limit of what you can you know use safely you know don't yeah. stare at it for minutes but like you know if it if it's if yeah. shining into somebody's eyes it's not going to hurt them uh if you do it accidentally although i wouldn't i wouldn't do it on purpose um and then they're encapsulated with a little driver inside so you know it you can power them from three to five volts you don't have to worry about the constant current stuff that's taking care of for you um and this one is the dot laser and i'm not going to be able to shine it at the camera because of course it's a bad idea so i'm going to shine it down at the uh the whiteboard because you, you can actually destroy a camera pretty easily by shining really? a laser. Really? Yeah, because it's, it's too much. You can burn it out. So this is the red dot laser, and uh, this one's pretty simple. It's just, you know, a dot. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So it's a nice dot. Uh, this one's the least expensive because it's it's pretty simple. Okay. Um, and you can do a little bit of focusing. There's a little focusing thing if you want if if you want the dot to be a little more focused. All right. Okay. Next up, we have a, a cross laser. I'll show yeah. That and I'll uh. I'll hit the photos while you're plugging that so in. So this one, I'll show, this one has a lens. Oh. Yeah, that's what it looks like when it's going. This one has a lens. It's hard to see, but it has a little uh, lens in it. And what it does is it, it's kind of like a diffraction sort of lens or, you know, whatever. I don't know exactly what I think diffraction is the right word. And it turns the line into a cross. This might be good for, like, targeting or vision because this way there's more of something for the vision system to grab onto. Yeah. And also, you know, you can detect if something's twisted because as it twists, it's uh, not level. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, you can also use this as, you know, if you want to measure 90 degrees, this can be used for that. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. That? Okay, next up, I'll have to find where to put down the, the line laser. Mm. Could these be used with a photo sensor? Uh, yeah, the dot one would be the best one for use of the photo sensor yeah. because dot, and then you can use a photo transistor photo sensor, you can, so you can use it for, a, like, a tripwire type thing. That'd be fun. Um, or, like, a laser harp or data communications. I'll, I'll show the TTL one last. And then this one... And this one, is the line one, right? This one also has a diffraction. You can kind of see a little bit. This has a little diffraction and uh, yeah. lens in it. And so this one is a line laser. And, um, a line laser is kind of interesting. And the reason we actually, um, uh, we actually... Got wanted this one the most uh, rather than the dot because the dot laser is not too exciting. But the line laser, what you can use is um, you can use this to do um, 3D scanning. Yeah. So um, as something passes um, through the uh, the line, you can use a web camera to pick up the very bright line if, if you're in a, in a dark room, and then you yeah. can do some basic 3D scanning using only um, a web web. Yeah, uh, we'll have more about webcam. that later. So yeah, check those out. I mean, if you look for. Uh, Laser webcam 3D scanning. You'll see projects on how to do this, and uh, a lot of them like it's got to use get like a prism or a lens. But this is yeah. nice because it's it's you just plug it in, you're ready to go. Okay. And then finally, we have um, the TTL laser, and so yeah. this one has a blanking line. So this one it basically looks just like the the five volt, but there's uh, three wires. It has red, black, and yellow. So you can connect it as normal, and then the the red and black are power, and then yellow is for the blanking. So when this is connected to 5 volts or 3 volts, I think that's the range, uh, it'll turn on. And so the reason you want to do this is um, it's best to control, uh, if you want to do like a laser light show or, or communications, like you want to transfer data using uh, laser pulses, yeah. um, it's, it's better to... Uh, power the laser continuously and then blank it. Yeah. To um to, to get as really opposed good pulse to width. turning it on and yeah. off. I think it I don't think it's bad for the laser. I think it's you don't get very consistent uh, pulse width. You don't know it, it's not going to be as consistent yeah. to use the blanking line. So um I one of the projects I want to try doing is um getting some galvos and maybe trying to do a basic laser light show. And yeah, so that's what blanking cool. is good for so that you don't have a line connecting everything so um yeah we'll we'll check out okay. some cool laser projects all right shortly and then we have a mount you want to just show that really oh, quick oh yeah the mount's pretty simple we gotta, so we gotta move yeah this is just a you know you can slide your laser in here and then um there's a set screw and it's it's set right yeah. now but you can yeah you can slide this through yeah and, then... and i guess i should kind of tell you the usual we have a giant box full of all the ones that aren't great that don't meet adafruit's yeah. kind of seal approval we think these are great. We got them at a great price. Oh, uh, this isn't loose, but this can tilt up and down. So you, yeah. you can attach this, and it, it, you have a little bit of you know adjustability here, and yeah. then this tilts up and down. Okay. So that was new products, and we're gonna keep moving. Whew. Does it? That was new products. Yeah. I think we, uh, we probably it. forgot one, but anyways. All right. Oh yeah, you know what we did? We forgot the. Uh, what? The these guys. Did you want to show these off? Or maybe next week. Um, yeah, real quick. Sorry, okay. one last new product. We got heat sinks. We you, got these little mini. Let me just say things. something. You don't need these for the Raspberry Pi, but everybody still wants heat sinks, so we carry your heat sinks. Well, we you actually, can use them for other stuff. We carry them for other stuff too, but um, actually, Waz um, actually asked us to carry these lovely little heat sinks. So we have three sizes. Yeah, this they're one's super cute. A, a half inch by a half inch, and they're flat on the bottom. Um, and then you can use um, thermal paste or thermal tape to attach it to your, uh, you know, sock or your ASIC or your FPGA or anything yeah. that you need to to cool. This is a, you know for surface mount stuff. We also have a 0.4 by 0.4 inch one, um, good for you know medium yeah. size. And this is just to, to cool down a processor so it operates at its ideal well, condition. Well, sometimes right? you have like a motor driver or something, and like those chips, it's like they come in QFN, and um, you know if you have a four layer board, you can, or, you know if you have a copper, uh, sorry, an aluminum uh, base board, you can heat sink some of these things. But sometimes you need a little bit more. 
Yeah. So these are like heat sinks that are flat. They're, they're just easy to attach to chips and stuff. They'll, they're designed to be glued or, or taped onto. Yeah, uh, these are super tiny. Yeah. So, too. they're nice. Yeah, this is the smallest one, but they're all uh, they're okay. all really good. We gotta keep going. Oh, they cool innovations. Oof. They make nice all right. Things. So, anyways, that really was new products. I mean it this time. For reals. For reals.